big old.
Catchy subjects that we want to talk about this evening. I want uh, my man Pookie. Come on down front, Pookie. Bud and his brother. A couple of guys come down front. I got some, some, some 
little challenges I want to put before these guys. See, let's have a nice round of applause for these guys. This is a guy that had that, had that 30 year birthday the other night. <laughs> he ain't want nobody to know it. And of course, all y'all know Pookie and Bud. Uh, the question that I have is, 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 is kind of a serious thing. I like to take this time, first of all, to uh, say we have some real serious things happening in, in, in the nation's capital this week. And it's, 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 it's really awful that we've gotten to the stage where things have gotten as bad as they are. I'm talking about the, uh, the, gun, the gunning down of the uh, police officer the other day. I happen to have known the officer and uh, he was a real nice guy. And uh, it just happened that he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And it's gotten to the point where a lot of these youngsters just do not have no innocent guidance as the direction that they're trying to take. I mean, it, it could have happened anywhere, but just so happens it happened to have happen uptown where a lot of other youngsters were enjoying themselves. And as a result, the uh, place was closed. Now, taking consideration the fact that there are so many places around the city that are being closed and they're blaming the places for the things that are happening as far as the youngsters are concerned. And I think one of the things that we need to start understanding is that we, as black men, are going to have to start pulling our sons, our brothers, and our, and our, and our, and our little nephews and things, and we're going to start have to check these guys. You understand? We're going to have to start doing it, you know? And we're going to have to start telling them, in our circles, you understand me? It's not the guns that make you a man. That's right. When we were coming up, Pookie, first of all, come up front. I want to emphasize the fact that when we was coming up, it seemed that rock and roll was under the gun. Is, 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 is that right? Yeah, well, rhythm and blues at that particular time. And, uh, and like our families, our mothers, and they were listening to dudes like her, Jeffrey, Billy Eckstein. And when we started singing, uh, they told us, like, hey, this ain't gonna never last, you know, because it ain't nothing but a bunch of junk y'all doing. And we had our clubs we went to and things, and we had our differences in these clubs, but it was always a fist fight. It was never with a gun or with a knife. So what I'm saying and what we're saying to a lot of you youngsters out there, because they tell me it's a lot of youngsters that stop me and they said they see these shows on a regular basis. Let's start solving some of our problems with these right here. You understand me? And taking them guns and get them out of these cars and out of these different places because number one, we don't make no guns. That's the first thing. And something has got to be done about the guns. That's the first thing. Now, Bud, I know that you and I were sitting back talking uh, uh, earlier today, you and your brother, and uh, we just happened to have uh, been talking about the preacher who had was been instrumental in the closing of this club and I want to know what your viewpoints on that are. I want to know if that preacher gonna find jobs for all the people that lost lost jobs up at that club. That's what I want to know. <laughs> you know well for one thing they have it out on the street. What we need to do is stop the, uh, the guns from coming into the city. The club didn't start this. The fellows out on the street did this. And you're putting people out of jobs it had nothing to do with it. Well, in a sense, from what I understand, it's going to be 360 some people that are going to be out of work as a result of them taking these people license. But there's been a number of other things that have happened as far as this club is concerned. But my primary thing is that could it have been handled a different way? Yes, it could have been handled a different way. Uh, to me, if all this been happening at this club, why not lock them people up out in the street? The club didn't have anything to do with this. You know, so <laughs> I don't understand why they want to close the club down. Well, for one thing, I think they wanted to get the club out of the neighborhood to start off with. The young people need some place to go. They need an outlet. If we start closing all these clubs where the people don't have nothing to do, we're going to have a bigger problem. We need uh, a do something. We need a kid something to do. Get them off the street. And by the same token, we can't take their music. You know, I don't like it, but uh, that don't mean anything. You know, uh, they like it, and uh, it would make them happy. And so we just can't take their music because of a few people 
who don't know how to behave themselves. Well, one of the primary things that you got to take in consideration is too is that when we were coming up, this was our music. And as a result, they said that it was uh, not to our advantage. But I, I got to be as old as I am, and y'all got to be as old as you are, the same thing. So I'm saying everywhere has their own culture. It's just like raggae, the raggae thing that people got their fault in. New Yorkers got the, the rap thing, and we got... My thing is that you got a lot of these younger guys in these bands, these are jobs. And see, a lot of the politicians fail to understand if they took the venue of going to some of these places, sitting, communicating with some of these youngsters, you understand, and seeing other than what the media put out. See, one thing you got to understand when you start talking about a lot of things that happen, the media prints nothing good. I had a call from a member of the media, and they asked me about what I thought about what was going on, and I explained to them, well, we do an oldie but goodie thing. Why don't you come down to that? They didn't want to hear that. No. Yes, Andy, because they, first of all, it was positive, right. it wasn't negative, and it didn't sell no papers. Right. You understand? And I've been through the thing myself, so I, 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 I got a feel. You understand? Whenever there's anything negative that they can do, they do. And then another thing you got to take into consideration, in fact, is this. Why is it that there is never, ever, anything that happened in white clubs? Always I want to know why too. I've yet to see anything in a paper about, well, wait a minute, I retract that. I seen an article a few months ago where the police officer was up in Georgetown and he knocked on the door and he couldn't get in because they wouldn't let him in after hours. <laughs> but as far as the fighting and all this stuff, they you never see any of this in the paper. So my thing is that a lot of you in these communities who are sitting back saying that this should be done, that this should be done, take in consideration the fact that you're going to be putting a lot of younger cats out of work who are trying not to do anything but make a living from the culture that they have been brought up in. You got 98% of them who are good. Now that 2% who are bad, we got to weed them out. And we got to do something about it. So I'm, 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 I'm saying this to the brothers who are listening out there. The older brothers, the younger brothers, let's start doing one or two things. They said that we shouldn't be rats. But understand this, anybody around you, in your household, you got a son or a nephew or something, and you know he's carrying a pistol, he's going out somewhere, take it away from him. You understand me? Or the individuals that's going out with him, they are headed for trouble. Stop it. Let's stop it now. You understand me? Because if we don't start putting our foot down with a lot of these youngsters. Hey man, a lot of them said that they don't have no tomorrow, no way. You know, and we need to do something now. Well, we need to show them that it is a tomorrow. I said, right now, we need to show them that it is tomorrow. Because the, the, uh, the majority of the young ones, they figure that they're not gonna live to get 30. And they will tell you this. What we need to do is speak to them and show them so they can live to get the age we are now. Okay, my brother, thank you. And like I said, Pookie, come here. When you was coming up, everybody was talking about rock and roll. Yeah, they were talking about the, you know, it was the devil's music. Uh, it was too suggestive. Uh, and they said it wouldn't last. <laughs> well, it was, it's, it's proven that you got here, and uh, you got you doing very well with it. Thank you, my brother. Pookie Hustle from the stand is our oldest special. And my thing is that why is it they never print anything except what happened in the black clubs? That's that's my thing. And as far as like the thing you said about the Reverend was concerned, you got 300 and some people put out of their jobs. So I would suggest you go down there and say, hey, you know, at least 50 of y'all, come on, let me see that I can get you some kind of work or something. Because hey, when this weather changes and you have nowhere for these youngsters to go, and they come back into these communities, you better prepare yourself. It's gonna be a long, hot, and dangerous summer. So I'm just telling you, you know, rather than just cut them off at the pass, as they said that they're doing, we better do something. And we better do something 
fast. Because I'm telling you, I can see it coming. Oh, uh, I guess that's enough preaching, right? <laughs> so this is our like like uh, this, this section is usually dedicated to people that wish that see us in different places and stop us and things like that. But I just wanted to take the time and I want to also take this time to say to the wife of the officer who was slain. I seen her on television uh, today and she was a strong, I mean this is a strong lady. I mean she she took it on the chin and she said that this is the way that her husband would have wanted her to carry it and for the kid, the, the, the daughter of, the, of that slain officer. Hey, you know, like, my heart go out to them just like a lot of other people go, but she said that this is the way that she think that her husband would want her to, to handle this and she, she took it like a, a real trooper because she knew that he loved the job that he done and he loved people. And they stopped the city today. I mean, they really stopped the city today when they had the funeral procession. So I salute my brother. Wait. Okay, let's get back. Yeah. My paper again. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, birthday. Okay. Yeah, birthday. Uh, oh, Marie said she want to make sure I get her birthday. I'm sorry, Marie. Okay, I want to say happy birthday to uh, Angela Waring and Crystal was Sly. Sly. Uh, to Avery. Braxton Jr. to uh, Ronetta. Ronetta Artis and to Tyrone Stout. Slack, Tyrone Slack. So this is from Marie. And, and I would like to wish y'all okay. I would like to wish all of our listeners and viewers and Breeze and the Dino dancers a happy Valentine's Day from Marie. That's so sweet. I would also like to say to all of the sick and shed in who watch us on a regular basis, like Clem. Clem is suffering from the flu. Well, I said especially hello to her and all of the sick and shed in that watch the show on a regular basis. I don't usually get into no preaching thing, but uh, we want to thank you for watching and uh, forgive me for preaching as much as I did tonight, okay? Let's roll, Dollar Bill. <laughs>
Boogie, boogie, where the wind come from the beat now? You know how that goes. Oh, yeah. Trying to preach the message. 
look like the old time is on our arms, it's time for me to go out of here. But we decided we want to go out with this record because it's definitely got to be a change. The change is going to come. You young brothers out there, let's try and solve some of these problems, deeds, and get some of the guns off the street. If you got somebody that keeps no carrying a gun, tell them that it's not worth it no more to get rid of them. Because our town is coming to a close. Let's solve our problem with you. And all you senior citizens out there, I love you badly. I'll see you next week. Ciao, y'all. Long time coming, but I know, I know, change has got to come.